Let's take a look at the Wholesale Chess Advanced Digital Game Timer with Bonus and Delay. When you order this product, it'll come in this box. On one side here, you see the word open. This uh, part of the box is magnetized, so it stays shut. Open that up. We'll take the clock out. Also included in the box is your user manual. Hold on to that. It has all the time controls that you're able to set. You want to refer to that later. On the front of the clock, it's pretty straightforward. We've got our rocker arm on top to uh, designate whose turn it is and to switch the clock from one side to the other. We've got our large display. We'll turn that on in just a minute. We've got a minus button. We'll use that button to decrease values when programming the clock. Also, you'll use that button to check how many moves have been played in specific time controls. Our play button here, that uh, will start your game, pause your game, uh, allow you to enter the settings modes, programming mode, and the plus is just the opposite of the minus here. We'll go through these buttons in more detail later. Underneath the clock, you'll see You've got the 38 pre-programmed modes, so they're uh, easily accessible here if you don't have your manual with you. They're also on the bottom of the box, and so you can see them there as well. And then we have our uh, on-off switch here and the battery cover. So let's go ahead and install some batteries. To do that, you're just going to pop this off. And we're going to put two AA batteries in the clock. Uh, as you're looking at the back of the clock, you'll see down in there the way the batteries go. Slide the first one in, push it down, put the second one in, put your case back on, and you're ready to go. We're going to turn on the clock. Now you can see uh, the digits on the display, and we'll go through more detail on those. With your batteries installed, when you turn on your clock, this is what you'll see on your display. Number 01, flashing here in the middle, that's the first pre-programmed uh, setting in the clock. I'm going to bring the back of the box here so you can see we have 38 pre-programmed time controls. Uh, it's convenient to scroll through those. You'll see these again on the back of your box, underneath your clock, as well as in your manual. And if you're going to use one of these, you can quickly bring it up and start playing in that time control. Also, at a later point, we'll talk about the two user programmable slots on the clock where you're able to either edit one of these time controls and save it or create your own time control from scratch. But now with the number one flashing, if we want to scroll through, we can start pushing the plus button. There's number two, three, you go forwards and backwards through all 38 time controls. So in this case, if we wanted to do a 25 minute rapid game, we know that's number two. So we would scroll back to number two. And there we are. We've got 25 minutes on each side of the clock. No delay, no increment time. So we want to select that time control by pressing the play button. Now we have it selected. You'll notice up on the top of the screen, let me zoom in a little bit, you have a black king here and a white king here just representing which side of the clock you're playing. Now if you're not playing chess and you're playing another game it's just who will go first. The white king will always go first and you'll notice that the rocker arm is elevated on that side of the clock. If you want to switch that the white king moves here, the black king stays there and this will be the first player to play. With that said we're ready to go. We push play the clock starts counting down on the white side. If at any point you want to pause the game, you just push this play pause button. The timer's paused, and you can start it again. Another neat feature with this clock, if you want to see the number of moves played at any point in any of the time controls, you can press and hold either the minus or the plus for three seconds. Now, 
you'll notice up on the display, I'll hold it here, the first digit of that zero here, that's the current time control you're in. Since this setting only has one time control, it will always be zero. It's only if you have multiple time controls in the same game that you'll see a different number in that first slot. The next two digits represent the number of moves. In this case, we've had one move by white and one move by black. On pause. Now you'll notice we've got three moves by each. So that's how you'll get into and play any of the 38 uh, pre-programmed modes. It's quick and it's easy. The bottom of the box as well as the underneath side of the clock are helpful references to quickly identify and find the type of game that you want to play. However, if you're looking for more detail to understand what those time settings mean, if you open up your manual to page 10, it starts there and it will tell you each in detail what each setting does. Some of these have two, three time controls in them and so if you want to understand how many moves have to be played or other things, this is your reference manual, so keep this manual with you. Now, what do you do if you want to have a timing control or play a game that's not listed on one of the 38 options. The easiest way to do that is to identify the option closest of the 38 and start there. So you'll notice that uh, as you look at your manual, we don't have a 10 minute game with a no delay, just a flat 10 minute game. We have a 5 minute game and a 25 in our first two settings. So what you would do is pick one that has a similar control for you, similar number of time controls, similar uh, features such as delay or bonus. And so we're going to leave this on number one. Even though it's a five minute game, we're going to edit this game. So we're going to first select it. And then we're going to press and hold this play button for three seconds to get into editing mode. Now we're in program mode. The first zero that's flashing here on the left, that's ours. We don't want to change that, so we'll use the button here, play, to skip to the next value. Now we're on minutes on the left-hand side. We do want to set that to 1 since we're going to have a 10-minute game. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Change that 5 to 0. No seconds. Now if you'll notice, when we shift it over to the right side of the clock by pressing the play button to scroll through the variables, immediately that time was copied over. Now you are able to change that if you want to handicap a game or give one player more time than the other, but if both sides will be using the same amount of time, you're ready to go. So continue to press through. Now because we had no other setting options in this time control, it was just a regular five minute blitz game, that's all the choices we have. And now you'll notice that this has been saved automatically to F01. F is a user saved setting. If you save any of the 38 settings, edit the setting and then move through it and save it, which it does automatically after you've changed any variables you want, it automatically changes to that position F. Now this game will be saved and you'll be able to access this 10 minute game at any point by going to F when you turn on the clock. So let's turn this off. Put the clock off, and we'll turn it back on. Because it was the last setting we used, it shows up automatically. However, if we want to scroll to another setting, we can do it to zero, automatically to one. This is where we started. So to get to the F setting, you go backwards, or you can scroll all through 38. But just go back to F, and there it's saved. Now, if I were to go into another one of the 38 pre-programmed settings and edit one of those, it will replace F01 with F whatever the number is that I edit. So you can only save 
one revision of the original 38 pre-programmed modes and it will always save it to the F spot followed by the number of the time control that you saved and it will always be found in that F location on your clock. We do have the ability however to create a custom time control from scratch. To create a custom time control we want to switch on the clock and move to zero zero. We can create our own custom time control here with up to four different time controls in this game. So once we're on zero zero we'll select that. Now we're in that game. We want to edit it by pressing and holding the play button. Now we're in edit mode or programming mode. So the first digit displayed is the number of hours. In this game we are going to play a one hour game so we'll change that to one, skip through the minutes and seconds. It automatically copies one over there just like in other modes. So we'll scroll through those. Okay. And next, we're if you notice up here, we're still in the first time period of this, or the first time control uh, of this uh, game. And it's going to ask us how many moves do we want to require or be made in this one hour. Now we're going to set that to 40, so we're going to scroll over and again it will copy that over here. So now we have it set that, that during the first time period it's one hour long and you're required to make 40 number of moves. Oops, that's not what I want. Let's change it back. Let's keep scrolling. So 40. And then it will ask us do we want to have bonus time or uh, increment time here. So we're going to add five seconds of increment time. Now one thing to keep in mind this clock does have delay and there are settings that include the delay settings uh, 34 through 38. However when creating a custom time mode from scratch you are unable to add delay only bonus time. If you want to create a custom time mode with delay you need to select one of those time modes that are pre-programmed with delay and then edit that setting and save it to the F location. But We've added five seconds of uh, bonus time to both sides of the clock now. Okay. Now you'll notice we've moved to the second time control in this game. So in this case we're going to set it for 30 minutes. Roll through. Now, it's asking us do we want to have a fixed number of moves required in that 30 minutes, and we don't. So we'll just keep scrolling through without changing any variable. But we are going to put five minutes of bonus time in this one as well. Or five seconds, I'm sorry. Five seconds of bonus time. Okay, now we're on the third time control. And this one we're just going to do game in 30s. So again we'll scroll over to 30. We're not going to require a fixed number of moves. So just keep scrolling through with the play button. No bonus time. Okay. Now we're in the fourth time control. We're not going to use it, so you just keep scrolling. Just keep it in play. It will go through, leave everything zero. Okay, now we're back to the game that we've set up, and it's been saved to location zero, zero. So we have our custom game now. It's an hour with a five second bonus added. We're going to have to play 40 moves. It will then scroll through to the second and third time controls that we have. You're ready to go. This will be saved there unless you decide at some point to edit this to some other custom time control. In a nutshell, that's how this clock works. We were able to install the batteries, turn on the clock, scroll through the 38 pre-programmed settings, select any of those, 
and immediately start playing a game. Check the number of moves at any time during the game. We also discussed how to edit any one of those 38 pre-programmed modes and when you do that it saves it automatically to the F location. Just a reminder that only one pre-programmed mode can be saved at a time to the F location. So if you edit a second pre-programmed time and save it, it'll be override whatever was in that F position. We also looked at how to create a custom time control from scratch in the 0, zero location. Also in the 0, zero location you can save only one custom time control. So to edit that you would go to that time control and edit what you have. You can actually have four unique time controls in that one game in the 0, zero location. That's the clock. It's uh, durable, has a one-year warranty, which covers everything except for physical damage to the clock or damage from batteries leaking. So we recommend that when you're not going to use the clock for a period of time, we take the batteries out and store it without the batteries in it. You want to keep the clock away from liquids and not play it in direct sunlight. If you need to clean it, you can use a slightly damp cloth to clean the outer part of the case, but only a dry cloth to clean the display. If you have any questions about this clock, you're always welcome to email us at info at wholesalechest.com or give us a call and we'll be happy to answer it. We think you'll be very happy with your clock and it should bring you years of enjoyment.